Okay, so we're moving on. In the last video, we talked about how to create a simple compound interest calculator, which you can see right here. We're basically calculating this formula in a spreadsheet. Wow. In this video, we've got a table where we're keeping track of a starting balance based on a certain interest rate and principal, and then looking at the ending balance over here after a number of years. In this case, it's 15 years because we're including 2021. And over here, you've got a table of that progress. And we even have what's called a future value formula, which does the work for you. But you basically see that this number and this number match. That's not an accident, right? This number, based on what's called a future value formula, does essentially all of the work behind this equation right here. And I'll teach you how to do that. So go to your spreadsheet, your compound interest spreadsheet, press the plus button for adding a sheet, and then come back to this video and we'll go from there. All right, so again, we always need our principal, it's our starting amount, our rate, and we'll come back to future value at the end. For principal, you want to format it as a currency. So click this button right here, type in a number, let's say 20,000, and then before you type in your percent, click on the percent button right here. I'm going to type in a really high interest rate, 20%. And the future value formula we'll leave alone. So just pause the video and make sure you have this information here. And then when you're ready, go to A6 and resume the video. Okay, so now we have time. Let's go from 2021, 2021, 2022, up to 2035. But instead of typing them all, I'm going to select these two, click on the blue square, and just kind of drag down. So why don't you pause the video and do that, and come back when you're ready. Each year we will have a starting balance and an ending balance after we have gained some interest. The starting balance is going to be whatever principle I put up here in B1. The ending balance is just that starting balance, and the formula basically says multiply by 1 plus the interest rate, in this case, this number here in B2. And you don't want to just type in B2. You want to put dollar signs around the B so that as I drag this formula down, it doesn't um, try to reference another cell. Because right now, if I drag this down, the next time it will try to grab an interest rate not from B2, from, but from B3. However, by putting dollar signs here, as I drag this formula down, it'll know I always want to refer to this interest rate. So you take that interest rate, and this is an annual compounding. Well, that's only one pay period. So that interest rate, you could put divided by one, but it's not necessary. Instead, I'm just going to close the parentheses there. And this is just for the first year. So you can put it to the power of n times t, which is 1 times 1, or 1, but you don't need that. It's just one year. So it's the starting principle right, of that year, and of the account in this case, times 1 plus b2. Boom, after the first year, $4,000 that we've gained, right? 20,000 to 24,000 is 4,000. Now in the second year, we compound that interest and put it back on the principal. So it's gonna, at the start of next year, we're not starting with 20,000 anymore, we're starting with 24,000. And then we just repeat the process. And now you have 28,800. And you're actually ready now, if you highlight these two and just drag them down, you'll have everything you need. And that's amazing. Now we want to clean some of this up. So I want to pause the video, make sure you get to this step. When you're ready, come back. The usual cleanup that I do, I click this cell. I center everything. By clicking these buttons here, I just click this button, center, this button for middle, and then I go to text wrapping in case anything doesn't fit. Then I'm going to highlight this little table up here, go to my borders, and I'm going to highlight this table here and go to my borders. And finally, I want to have a color scheme. So I'm going to select these, go to Format, Alternating Colors, and I'll leave it on gray for now. Same thing here. Highlight, and boom. Give it a style. Right now, it seems like I'm stuck on A1 through B3, so I have to do another alternating color. Do it this way. There's, I'm sure there's a faster way. I'm just going to do it this way, though. Alternating colors. And there we go. Um, so now we have a table. We have our information up here. And we see that we've got $308,140, quite a bit. Now we can do all of this in one step. And in the last video, we looked at one way of doing that. But I'll show you how to use the future value formula. 
If you look up the future value formula for Google Sheets, you'll get this web page, and the syntax is right here. So the future value, when you enter this formula, the first thing you're going to do is enter your interest rate. Then you can see here it says number of pay periods. They're assuming maybe it could apply to a loan um, for a car or a house. In this case, you're investing money in yourself, so the number of pay periods is really the number of times that the interest is compounding. So for us, it starts off with rate, then the number of times you're compounding. There's no payment here, nothing, nothing, nothing we're adding to the, the investment or taking away from it. And the present value, this is a negative number for us because this, this represents essentially cash flow. If you have money coming into you, it's positive, or coming out, it's negative. When you're investing money, that's a negative cash flow from your bank account, essentially, right? You're paying out money. So let's enter that information in. And you're going to watch and see that it will give you this number down here. So instead of doing all of this work, instead of doing it this way using our classic formula here, the future value formula is, is a workaround that you might like. All right, so future value, we take our interest. Then we're interested in the number of times that we're going to compound it. In this case, it's 15, right? Because it's the 15 years. And we're not paying anything. And finally, it's our negative of our principal. And there we go. So I'm going to, hold, I'm going to just stop here so you can take a look. That's our formula. Future value equals B2, comma, 15, comma, 0, comma, negative B1. So pause the video and get that. And you're ready to move on, we'll make our chart. All right, so there's lots of cool ways to make charts in Google Sheets. I'm gonna to go to Insert, Chart, and just see what happens, let's see what it gives me. There's no data, that's fine. Um, so what I'm gonna do is leave my chart right here, and I'm gonna leave it on a column chart like that. And for data range, I'm just gonna say from here to here, basically, so that's from E6, to C21, and I lost my table information, so I'll click this, click the little more options button right here, and now I can do that. So I'm gonna type that in, and that's A6, excuse me, to C22. Hit enter. Cool. So you can see right here what's happening. All right, it's actually graphing time, starting balance, ending balance, we don't want that, right? We don't want the time in there, let's go fix that. So you can remove things. The series that it's graphing is right here. So I'm going to remove the time. And in this case, this is a little confusing to me. It's starting balance, ending balance of each year. I just want the ending balance. Boom. So I'm just clicking the more option and deleting. And then I do want some customization here. But before I do that, I do want x-axis labels. For my x-axis, I want the years. So I just click that. Now I can see when, what year I'm at in each case. Under customization, give it a title that makes sense to you. So chart and axis titles. I'm gonna say um, compounding annually. There we go. All right, so that's basically done. I'm gonna rename the tab down here to compounding annually. And then in the next video, we'll do basically repeat this process, but to do it semi-annually. Okay, thanks.